Hello, friends, and welcome to Good Friday Worship. We hope that you'll join us for Easter morning worship this Sunday at 1030. But for this Good Friday service, we're going to hear a story from Lutheran pastor Walter Wangren. Please join in singing, How Deep the Father's Love for Us. I saw a strange sight. I stumbled upon a story most strange, like nothing in my life, my street sense, my sly tongue had ever prepared me for. Hush, child, hush now, and I will tell it to you. Even before dawn, one Friday morning, I noticed a young man, handsome and strong, walking the alleys of our city. He was pulling an old cart filled with clothes, both bright and new, and he was calling in a clear tenor voice, rags, rags, new for old, I take your tired rags, rags. Now this is a wonder, I thought for myself, for the man stood six foot four, his arms were like tree trims, hard and muscular, and his eyes flashed intelligence. Could he find no better job than this? To be a rag man in the city? I followed him. My curiosity drove me, and I was not disappointed. Soon the rag man saw a woman sitting on her back porch. 
She was sobbing into a handkerchief, sighing and shedding a thousand tears. Her knees and elbows made a sad X. Her shoulders shook. Her heart was breaking. The ragman stopped his cart. Quietly, he walked to the woman, stepping around tin cans, dead toys, and pampers. Give me your rag, he said gently, and I'll give you another. He slipped the handkerchief from her eyes. She looked up and he laid across her palm a linen cloth so clean and new that it shined. She blinked from the gift to the giver. Then as he began to pull his cart again, the ragman did a strange thing. He put her stained handkerchief to his face. And then he began to weep, to sob as grievously as she had done. Yet, she was left without a tear. This is a wonder, I breathed to myself. And I followed the sobbing ragman like a child who could not turn away from mystery. Rags, rags, new rags for old. In a little while, when the sky showed gray behind the rooftops and I could see shedded curtains hanging out black windows, the ragman came upon a girl whose head was wrapped in a bandage, whose eyes were empty. Blood soaked her bandage. A single line of blood ran down her cheek. Now the tall ragman looked upon this child with pity, and he drew a lovely yellow bonnet from this cart. Give me your rag, he said, and I'll give you mine. The child could only gaze at him while he loosened the bandage, removed it, and tied it to his own head. The bonnet he set on hers. And I gasped at what I saw, for with the bandage went the wound. Against his own brow, it ran a darker, more substantial blood. His own. Rags, rags, I take old rags, cried the sobbing, bleeding, strong, intelligent ragman. The sun hurt both the sky, now and my eyes. The ragman seemed more and more in a hurry. Are you going to work? He asked a man who leaned against a telephone pole. The man shook his head. The ragman pressed him. Do you have a job? Are you crazy? Sneered the other. He pulled away from the pole, revealing, his right, the, re revealing the right sleeve of his jacket flat the cuff stuffed into the pocket he had no arm. So said the ragman, give me your rag, give me your jacket, and I'll give you mine. So much quiet authority in his voice. The one-armed man took off his jacket, so did the ragman. And I trembled at what I saw, for the ragman's arm stayed in his sleeve and when the other put it on, he had two good arms, thick as tree limbs, but the ragman only had one. Go to work, he said. After that, he found a drunk, lying unconscious beneath an army blanket, an old man, hunched, wizened, and sick. He took that blanket and wrapped it around himself. But for the drunk, he left new clothes. And now I had to run to keep up with the ragman. Though he was weeping uncontrollably and bleeding freely at the forehead, pulling his cart with one arm, stumbling for drunkenness, falling again and again, exhausted, old, old, and sick, yet he went with terrible speed. On spider's legs, he skittered throughout the alleys of the city this mile and the next until he, tame, until he came to its limits, and then he rushed beyond. I wept to see the change in this man. I hurt to see his sorrow, and yet I need, I need to see where he was going in such a haste. 
perhaps to know what drove him so. The little old ragman, he came to a landfill. He came to the jar garbage pits, and I wanted to help him in what he did, but I hung back hiding. He climbed a hill with tormented labor. He cleared a little space on that hill, then he sighed, he laid down, he pillowed his head on a handkerchief and jacket, he covered his bones with an army blanket, and he died. Oh, how I cried to witness that death. I slumped in a junk car and I wailed and mourned as one who has no hope because I had come to love the rag man. Every other face had faded in the wonder of this man and I cherished him, but he died. I sobbed myself to sleep. I did not know, how could I know? that I slept through Friday night and Saturday and it's night too. But then on Sunday morning, I was awakened by a violent light, pure, hard, demanding light, slammed against my sour face and I blinked and I looked and I saw the first wonder of awe. There, there was the rag man, folding the blanket most carefully, a scar on his forehead, but alive. And besides that, healthy. There was no sign of sorrow or age, and all the rags that he had gathered shined for cleanliness. Well, then I lowered my head, and trembling for all that I had seen, I myself walked up to the rag man. I told him my name with shame, for I was a sorry figure next to him. Then I took off all my clothes in that place, and I said to him with dear yearning in my voice, dress me. He dressed me. My Lord, he put new rags on me, and I am a wonder beside him. The rag man, the rag man, the Christ. Please join in singing Stricken, Smitten, and Afflicted.
Well, I hope you enjoyed uh, the reading of The Ragman by Pastor, uh, that was written by Pastor Walter Wangren. And for the purposes of this Good Friday service, we wanted to just share this story with you as, as a reminder that through Good Friday, Jesus meets us and provides us what we need, and he gets us to Sunday in ways that we might not even recognize at the time. And so this, this story is just a reminder of how God always shows up, even the, in the midst of the darkness. And on Sunday, we'll gather for Easter worship and uh, worship the risen Christ.